Let's take an in-depth look at the resaturation and bleed properties in Corel Painter. First, I want to discuss the significance of white as it pertains to blending. White is a special color in Corel Painter for many reasons, but especially so when it comes to blending. When you think of a traditional oil painting, it's often on a white canvas. Sometimes the canvas is wet, having been coated in a white paint thinner, which blends with the color on your brush. White is also important when you're working with transparent media like watercolor and markers. Transparent media is meant to cover white paper, so there aren't any white watercolor paints or markers. In Corel Painter, it's assumed that your canvas or paper will be white by default. So white is used as a way to simulate wetness or clear water for pigments to bleed into. This is accomplished by making white invisible when working with certain brush types. If you are not painting on a white canvas, then things can get a little confusing when using these properties. So just be aware that white is sometimes required for blending to work properly. Now that you know how the color white is important to blending, we can dive into resaturation and bleed. Resaturation controls how pigment is loaded on the brush and transferred to the canvas. The tooltip shows that resaturation controls the amount of color that is replenished in a stroke. Values lower than 10% makes brush strokes that fade in gently. To examine this effect, we'll select the fat chalk brush in the default chalk category. I'll reset it and set the green property to 0%. I'll disable the green expression so we can see the stroke more clearly. And in the blending flyout, I'll set the resaturation expression to none. I'll also open the opacity flyout and set the opacity to 100% and the expression to none as well. This will ensure that these other properties don't interfere with the demonstration. Resaturation is set to 100% for this brush. So if I paint on the yellow background with black paint, I cover the yellow with black. As I lower resaturation, you'll begin to see around 10% is where the paint becomes fainter and fades in gently. When examined this way, resaturation is simulating the amount of media loaded on your brush. If only a small amount of paint is loaded, then not much is transferred to the canvas. In this case, I'm using chalk, so imagine the chalk is so hard that it barely makes a mark. Increasing resaturation would create chalk that's softer and covers more opaquely. But resaturation does more than just control the strength of your medium. It also controls the rate at which the medium applies to the canvas. Let's take a look at another way to visualize the effects of resaturation. I'll set resaturation to 100%, and I'll paint a red stroke that starts and ends in the transparent area of the canvas. Next, I'll set the resaturation to 10%, and paint a second stroke. If you look at the beginning of the second stroke, you can see that it gradually fades in to reach full opacity. The previous stroke with resaturation at 100% does not fade in at all. If I set resaturation to 1% and paint a stroke, it takes longer for the color to fade in. You can imagine that since I'm painting on a wet canvas, the color I chose is blending with the white color or wetness. You can visualize this by disabling enhanced layer blending. If too little paint is loaded on my brush, then the white of the canvas will dominate the stroke. If I use the spacing property to increase the spacing of the dabs in the stroke, you can see that the stroke is just a series of dabs that can overlap. These dabs are gradually increasing in opacity, and that rate is controlled by the resaturation property. If I set resaturation to zero, no paint is transferred to the canvas. That's because when you are resaturating or replenishing the color in your stroke, you are controlling the paint loading on your brush. If you do not have any paint loaded on your brush, then you can only blend. If you only load a little paint on your brush, your clean bristles will be mostly blending while depositing a tiny bit of pigment. As you increase resaturation or paint loading, the brush eventually becomes saturated enough with paint to overcome the effect of blending. So resaturation is what determines how and when paint is applied to the canvas. While resaturation simulates how the brush is loaded with pigment, the bleed property simulates how colors mix with and smudge underlying colors on the canvas. To give you a traditional art analogy, Bleed could be the loading of thinners or water on a bristle brush, but bleed can do more than that. Imagine all of the different ways you can blend traditional media. You have oils, which are thinned with chemicals, watercolors and acrylics are thinned with water, and hard or dry media can be blended together. For example, blending two chalk colors together, or blending a white pastel into a red pastel. All of these blending techniques have different properties and results. Despite all of the intricacies of each medium, 
Blending is just mixing and smudging pigments. You are either moving color that is already on the canvas, or mixing it with colors on your brush. If you think of bleed this way, it's actually quite simple. I'll select the default Just Add Water Blender. I'll increase the spacing to 100% so we can see how bleed affects each dab. And I'll disable the opacity expression. With resaturation at zero, and bleed at 0%, 25%, 50%, and 100%, I'll pull from the red paint across the yellow and off the edge of the layer. You can see that the way the color is pulled out or smudged is similar to how the color fades in with resaturation. I can control the rate at which the color is smudged with the bleed property. A low bleed value simulates a brush that is more wet and will pull less color into the stroke. The brush will mix more than it smudges. A mid-range bleed value is a brush that is semi-dry. It will create something in between smudging and mixing with a blend that looks oily or sticky. The mixture of color within the stroke will be stronger toward the lower end of the range. But bleed doesn't just affect the blending properties of your brush. It also affects the blending properties of the paint on the canvas. You can paint with a dry brush on a wet canvas or paint with a wet brush on a dry canvas. You can even paint wet on wet or dry on dry. There are traditional painting techniques associated with each method. I'll revert the template and set the spacing to 50% with bleed at 0%, 50%, and 100%. I'll blend starting from the red, moving across the orange and yellow off the edge of the layer and back across the other direction using long zigzag strokes. You can see that when bleed is at 0%, the brush does not apply any paint nor does it mix the colors together. It simply pulls the wet paint on the canvas around as if I'm using a dry blender on wet paint. With bleed at 50%, I have added some wetness or thinners to my blender, which now smudges the paint while mixing it. This feels like I'm blending acrylics or oils. If I set bleed to 100%, my blender still mixes the paint colors, but it does not pull the paint very far. At first, it feels like the brush or canvas became more dry, but what's happening is that there's so much wetness or thinner on the brush that it lacks enough friction to move the underlying paint on the canvas. With a bit more blending, I can eventually get the paint on the canvas to budge. If I blend overlapping strokes in a small area between the orange and the red, the resulting mixture of color is a fairly even blend of both colors, as you can see when I sample them. This feels a lot like I'm painting with plain water onto semi-dry watercolor paint to re-wet it. If I reduce bleed to 10%, and try that same blending technique, you can see that the mixture of color is dominated more by one color than the other, depending on where I started my stroke. Now it no longer feels like I'm blending on watercolor. It feels like I'm blending onto oils. The effect of bleed changes yet again when you are working with dry media. I'll switch back to the fat chalk brush. I'll reset the brush and set resaturation to 0%. I'll repeat the previous example with bleed at 100% and 10%. You can see that although the high bleed should mean the brush is really wet, it actually looks like a dry powdery blending because I'm using chalk. Lowering the bleed starts to make the blend look oilier as the colors smudge more. Now the blending looks more like I'm working with oil pastels. So to summarize, if you want a wetter blending for painting, set bleed higher. If you want an oily or smudgy blender for painting, set bleed lower. And for dry media, a higher bleed will create a drier blend while a low bleed will create an oilier blend. It's a delicate balancing act when working with resaturation and bleed because each property influences the behavior of the other. According to the painter documentation, when bleed is set higher than resaturation, more color bleeds than covers, so the stroke will never reach full opacity. Or in other words, if bleed is greater than resaturation, the resulting blend of color will be dominated by the underlying paint, since there is more wetness on the brush than pigment. A low resaturation value has the effect of making the color loaded on the brush appear thinner or more diluted. So if you want the loaded color to have more influence over the color mixture, simply increase the resaturation. To demonstrate this, I'll blend on a layer that is set to the gel composite method. This will give your media a wet transparent appearance. I'll select the Just Add Water brush and reset it. I'll choose yellow for my color. I'll set resaturation to 1% and bleed to 20%. If I pull out some of the red paint with these blending properties, I'm able to pull some of the red color into the stroke, 
but then it fades to an orange mixture of the two colors. Because resaturation is low, you can imagine that only a tiny bit of yellow paint was replenished or loaded on the brush, resulting in a stroke that is mostly water that pulled the red pigment out and then mixed it with some of the yellow. If I increase resaturation to 5%, then less of the red color is pulled out and the yellow paint is more concentrated and opaque. It's as if I loaded more yellow paint on my brush this time. If I double the resaturation to 10%, the paint loaded on my brush is beginning to become more dominant and covers the underlying red paint more than it blends. Once resaturation is greater than bleed, the color blending will start to diminish until the brush only adds paint. Next, with resaturation at 10% and bleed at 25%, 50%, and 100%, let's paint some straight vertical strokes pulling from the red outward. This brush has been resaturated with a bit of yellow that you can see in each stroke. But if you look at the base of the stroke, you can see that as I increase bleed, the brush and canvas become wetter. So both the paint on the brush and the paint on the canvas mix more easily. So as you can see, you can adjust the ratio of resaturation and bleed to create brushes that only blend, brushes that only add paint, or brushes that do some of each. Opacity and spacing can also affect the resaturation and bleed results. For instance, opacity can make the paint loaded on the brush more transparent and it influences the strength of the blending effect. To make it easier to create a brush with these properties, you can start with one of the blending presets and then adjust resaturation and bleed until you get the result you want. 